welcome back to Let's Play Kirby's Dream Course. In the previous episode, we finished course number seven, and therein had a uh, mix of course number five's missteps and course number six's clutch shots. It was an odd combination, but it was enough to give us a silver medal. And so in this episode, this is it, guys. The final course up at... I'm not sure where I was going with that. Yeah, the final course before us. It's course number eight, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Hey, there's the man of the hour. Oh, uh, sort of. Saying this is only just a preview, huh? Yes, let's see. Where did DDD hide? <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, uh... This is, uh, this course is set up very, very differently in, uh, aesthetically from, that's not what I wanted. And, uh, that's not what I wanted either, but let's take advantage of the opportunity. As you can see, Bounder here, uh, starts off kind of sloppy, but finishes strong. Either that or that's just a, a, a testament to how difficult this course is at first. Yeah, boy. So, uh, we got our work cut out for ourselves here, and as you can kind of get a glimpse of the background, Let's see if we can just, uh, there we go. You can see it is very, very different. We got the night sky, we got that interesting looking water, the icebergs, the whales. It's kind of very Antarctic kind of look, which actually, uh, is definitely the kind of thing you'd expect a penguin to make. <laughs> but as for the course itself, it's, uh, not pretty. As you can see, hole one has us going down this long slope with a couple caboos. One, annoyingly enough, on the side there. And at the bottom, we got four squishies and two warps encircled by borders. You see, the annoying thing is, these enemies are placed in just a way so that you can't just use an aerial shot to get them. And, uh, well, that is, uh, you can't just use an aerial approach because then you'll run smack dab into that wispy and you'll screw yourself up. And you can't just, uh, head directly downward either, because even if you try to bounce halfway down on the slope, you wind up hitting that second wispy instead of the first. You can't take a direct aerial descent. And so, what you gotta do is, if my controls would just cooperate with me here, is you gotta slide down the slope at just the right angle so that you hit that kaboo up top. Apologies again if uh, it gets kind of hard to check where I'm scrolling at times. There's only one speed setting for uh, for how you scroll this and it's uh, kind of fast. Yeah, except there for some reason apparently. I'm not, that was weird. Okay, so, uh, and so you gotta hit that kaboo up top and then hit this kaboo down here while lining yourself in a way so you can tag at least one of these squishies, you know, to make things easier for the uh, shots afterward. And it's just, this hole becomes so much harder due to the fact that when you hit a grounded shot, you cannot see how it will bounce. I'm not sure why they did that. It means you basically have to rely on past experience or trial and error here. And it's a problem. Because how else would we know that we want a shot here with just under three-fourths power? And I really hope this works. Go down. It did work. Okay, so now we slide in. I'll we'll have to back up a bit. That'll do. And so what we gotta do here... This is not gonna be easy. So let's... Improvise from here. We want to try and curve this not that full of a curve So that we hit both of these squishies and slowly work our way back toward that one uh, over to the right Here's hoping this works I'll do Boost got it. Okay, good. Now all we got to do is make sure we don't go too far off. I Had to say it Okay, we want to use an aerial shot then line this up just right so that we bounce into the cup. Is that... Okay, you see, as is, this might run the risk of being... of landing us too far north and just missing the cup on that side, but one... That's not what I wanted. But one further down, and we might be too short of the cup. This is where this isometric perspective can kind of be a problem. Let's just go with this. No spin. Max power. Let's not boost yet. Let's see how this goes. Now we boost. This should be good. Just short. I don't know what I expected. 
But if there was any hole you were going to score a four on in this game, this would definitely be one of them. I mean, even, even the CPU's best score got a four on this hole. It's only gonna get better from here, folks, trust me. Much less trial and error, for the most part. A couple more wispies here. I gotta kinda question what they're doing growing in such an icy environment. But uh, it is a Kirby game, they're kind of whimsical. So we got a Starman, a uh, red booster sending us across this water, a bouncer here and a gas bar, and then past them, a setup with three kaboos. So ideally, we wanna do this so that we uh, land in between these two kaboos after our first shot. Because, uh, you know, good luck getting both of them with a single shot since all these other enemies are set up in a straight line. So what we wanna do is, if at all possible, aim uh, so that we use high jump and hit the bouncer. Preferably the uh, very edge of the bouncer so we don't end up going over the gas bar. So we want to hit the uh, the edge nearest the gas bar. So we want to, uh, you see that uh, kind of, you see the uh, the uh, orangish tile that the bouncer is on there? In, that's the one that's lined up with the gas bar. We want to aim just down to the left of it where it meets the white tile. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to try and high jump right when Kirby's shadow is just at the edge of, you see that orange tile completely in the water there in the middle there? We're going to try and use high jump when Kirby's shadow is there. So here goes nothing. Minimal power for his little, ooh, I was afraid there for a minute. <laughs> oh, trying to press it wasn't enough. Typical, ain't it? So in lieu of that, we're just going to take a regular shot and uh, see where this takes us. Let's see, one, two, where the kaboo is, three, four, five, six, the gas bar. I bet if we use high jump just before, actually, six is where the gas bar is, so maybe if we pull our shot up short, use the bouncer to carry a little further, and hit high jump right as we're in the air, we will land our high jump on that kaboo, bounce a little further, and finish our shot right in the middle of where those kaboos are. Oh, come on, please. Oh, no. This is course five waiting to happen, isn't it? So, um, let's use this shot to hit these two kaboos on the side here to make this final shot just a little easier to do. Just a little easier. Let's, uh, we want to play this on the safe side. Four notches of backspin. No pressure. Got it. And barring something catastrophic happening, we got this. Bounce, and it's in. Nothing but net. If there was a net. <laughs> so needless to say, this could be going better so far. So this hole's kind of, uh, unusual. So, um, you see these bouncers here, what they want us to do is use a fly shot, aerial shot, whatever you want to call it, ricochet off these bouncers, and land in a way so that we're lined up with this waddle dee and can keep going. But, um, due to how, uh, you actually cannot see where you go if you use a less than full power shot, or how the bouncers affect it, it's once again a bit of a luck-based mission. But you know what does help? Some topspin. You know, it's actually interesting in that uh, hole number, th it's this hole, 8-3, actually has a beta version in the uh, unused, unused content. And it's rather interesting to show how some of these holes may have changed and developed uh, as the game went on. So we want, that was too much. That was too much. That is not good. Not good. Well, uh, we got our work cut out for ourselves here. Uh, boy. We're gonna have to really get crafty here. So we want to see if we can line ourselves up with one, two, three, four, five, six, that orange panel at the base of the slope. Maybe just a little past it. And high jump our way up to the Waddle Dee. This is not going to be easy. Not gonna, not gonna mince words with you. Up we go. Got it. And so if we pull this up just right and the Gordo doesn't slap us in the face, and it might not worth where we're positioned. We can just, careful, careful, careful. Okay, it's past us. Three notches of backspin. 
Let's make it two. Let's use a bit of side spin, actually. Make sure we uh, the Gordo doesn't interfere. Should do it as long as we uh, aim this so that the Gordo is heading backward when we land. So we want to be very careful here. That's too much. That's not enough, then, rather. But will it go in anyway? It went in anyway. Okay. We'll take that break. Phew. Okay. Okay. Okay, 11 shots after three holes, but we can still do this. We, we can still do this. We can still get a silver. Fortunately, this hole is a lot less uh, prone to things going wrong if you know what you're doing. It's more of a puzzle hole. So we got three air vents here. Uh, interesting is that uh, the higher you are, uh, as an air vent activates, it'll send you higher. St okay, I guess that's kind of obvious, but these uh, raise you up in almost like a stairway kind of deal. So what we want to do is use high jump to get up here. And the uh, interesting thing is, uh, well, the ability you bring into, you finish this hole with factors into the next one, but it's kind of a hassle if you uh, don't try to do the obvious thing and get high jump here and work from there. If things go wrong, you got the warp there. But uh, for now, let's just do this. You want to use high jump just as soon as we hit the third vent? Up we go. And on the rocky, and stone. That was easy enough. And so now we'll clean second shot and use some stone. And we're in with a two. Badly needed. So, uh, made up for that, fortunately. We got a 13 heading into uh, the back four. If we keep this pace up, we actually should manage to, uh, wait, no. No, 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 no. We need to do better than that if we want a silver. Let's, uh, let's fix that. So, how do we want to do this? Thing is, uh, with the setup we have, we actually cannot get a hole in one on this hole. The only way you can pull that off is if you bring wheel ability into this hole. And to get wheel ability, you need to perform some very tricky and complicated shots that will all, all but guarantee that you get worse than a two on the previous hole. So, um, it's a matter of uh, pick your poison, more or less. So what you want to do is use burning at a level that lets you uh, hit both of those P-umpkins, use tornado, travel down these stairs with the brew matters on them, and land in the cup where this gas bar is. But as is, we gotta use our first shot to hit these first two enemies. And bounce a little back so that we don't just hit the board if we use a fly shot. So what we want to do here is use a bit of a shorter shot to make sure we land on this first P umpkin. Use burning as we're level with the second one, and we'll uh, improvise from there. You uh, you want to use uh, you want to hit right here as after you use tornado to uh, curve counterclockwise, align yourself up with a broom hatter, then curve left. No, use left to curve counterclockwise, then use right to curve clockwise and hit the second one. That would have been a big deal if I had messed that up. So uh, hold up. So we want uh, just a little over half power. That'll do. Fireball away. There's tornado. Hit tornado. Spin to hit the broom hatter. Get the. Oh no. Help! If it was going. Well, if it could ha if it could go wrong, it's gone wrong on this course. The good news is, if we use this shot with perfect power, we will land right in the cup. And if we don't, uh, let's take some precautions. Some backspin in case we need to come back to hit the gas bar. Full power. Did not hit the gas bar, but we're prepared. Back up. Not gonna hit it, so we'll use Tornado to give ourselves a little extra- uh-oh. That could have gone better. Let's 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 just let's just put this hole past us. Into the cup. We're not gonna talk about it. We're just gonna take the four. We're just gonna hold that L and move on. That's what we're gonna do. 
and we're going to pay no attention to the fact that we got a score no worse than a six on these last three holes to get a silver medal. The good news is, uh, that's actually very, very doable. So we got yet another UFO appearance here, two of them no less, which is going to create a very interesting puzzle. So what we want to do here is use UFO in a way that lets us take out all of these enemies if at all possible, saving that P-Umpkin for last since it's at a level that we can't reach. So what we actually want to do is find a way to hit that second UFO in midair and uh, use that to get up to the cup. So what we want to do is give ourselves enough momentum so that when we uh, activate UFO, we can move fast enough to do everything we need to do, get to that second UFO in time to activate it again before we land, and then from there, get up to the cup. And we want to use the UFO's ability to ride up slopes and then stay level if it uh, goes off a flat surface to do that. Remember, right moves you clockwise, left moves you counterclockwise. Let's go back. We're not to the backspin because more than that would make the UFO too hard to control. Three, I think we can manage though. This could get dicey. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're not going to make it. So what's, what are we going to do here? No, we want to we wanna be uh, straightforward. Let's do this. Proc UFO immediately. Around, line up with the slope, and... All right, we got another one. <sighs> nothing can go right on this course. Just nothing is going right. That was an easy hole-in-one, and I screwed it up. <sighs> okay. So we got a plethora of copy abilities here, both in this section and the one beyond it, which we'll see in a minute. Two to choose from here, and we actually don't want to use that red booster because uh, we got to take care of these two. And so, down here, we got four more. And you think, you know, it's another one of those, we want to choose one to take to the next hole, but actually, no, that's not what you want to do. It's more a matter of using the abilities contained herein to, um, uh, to finish this hole as easily as possible. So what we want to do is aim first of all for the Togezo, and we want to activate UFO. And save it for as late as possible. Turn around, hit the chili, get a little bit of distance off the slope. We want to line ourselves up with... That's not going to do anything. Damn it all. Yeah, I panicked. But we're gonna try and make up for it. We wanna use a little bit of curve. We wanna hit this Starman and Twister. No, that's not what I want. Let's get a better view here. Let's move it backward. Because if, it po if possible, what we wanna do is use Tornado to get these last two. Let's hit it. One, two. We're not going to get it. We're going to get another bronze medal. Damn it! No. Ugh. This is frustrating because... Because a bronze is very much doable on this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Final hole, the final course, and... Well, it turns out it actually does help uh, a little if you brought Spark into this hole. You can just use an aerial shot, but it, it makes things a little tougher. Slightly tougher, because you see, this is one long hole. During tornado, spikes, uh, freeze, a red booster in water, stone, slopes, wheel, more water, fireball, a border sitting in midair. UFO, warps, bouncers, three gas bars in line, Starman, another wispy, and a Rocky to cap it off. It's every copy ability in the entire game, all ten of them. And it's a very long and daunting looking trial. But if we pull this off and if we make up for what's gone wrong in every hole before this one, except, uh, 
what, four? We can actually manage to get a hole in one here. Let's do this. This is gonna be dicey. I'm gonna use just a decent amount of power. Activate Spark to get the Wispy out of our way. Use Tornado's Hype Boost to jump over these spikes. Freeze just before we reach the booster. Carry across the water stone immediately to drop down to the slope. Then wheel the coast across the water. Bounce up, fireball at the apex of the bounce. Immediately activate UFO. One, two, three. That's the star man that'll activate the cup. Where the Rocky stands. Use high jump to vault over Wispy. And if we do this just right, we're about to bounce back. Slide into the cup for a hole in one. Whew. And that is how you do that. See? That is a more accurate representation of my skill. Not all that stuff that happened on most of the previous holes. <laughs> so, four, four, three, two, four, three, four. But we got a one at the end. That's something, right? So we got a 25. Did not beat Bounder. And we got a bronze medal. <sighs> Let's just do this. Well, we did unlock something. Congratulations, you got a medal for all courses. Go to the title screen and look at the menu. Well, uh, it's actually a little out of the way, but we'll look at that later on. You see, you do unlock something for obtaining at least a bronze medal on every course. And if you've played through some of these courses enough times, have a general fear for them. Fear for... Yes, you do get a fear for them to some extent, but if you generally have a feel for them, you will, uh... You know, it's doable. So, we got another another score that we didn't beat, another medal we need to obtain off-camera. And so, with course 8 clear, what do we got here? Turns out King DDD was hiding in plain sight. But the illusion's broken and the king can hide no more. Time to confront him and return the stars to Dreamland Sky. Very ominous looking glowing board. There's a big guy. But it's not so simple, of course, and he's got a giant robot to send after us. So, with this only boss fight in the game. You have to use a combination of aerial and grounded shots to knock DDD backward. Grounded shots, uh, you're able to fire off faster, but aerial shots do more damage. He sends these miniature DDD robots after you. If, uh, once they get in line with you, if you are present, they will slide after you. And if they touch you, you die instantly. Immediately lose a life. So, uh, it's all a matter of timing. The, uh, the spin does nothing, actually. It's just a matter of, uh, using it to time when you want to fire your shot off so that the little mini robots can't get you as easily. If DDD gets to you, that's an instant game over and you want to not let that happen by any means possible. Another shot. Wow, that's already it. Only boss fight in the game and if you know what you're doing, it's not that hard at all. And the king has been thwarted. And so with that, our odd golf-themed adventure is at an end, and Kirby brings the stars back to the sky. And, uh, I'll just let the credits play and let you listen to the rest. You've earned it. A star made out of stars. Hmm.
You know, Kirby, I'm pretty sure that there wasn't a constellation before that looked like you. Just saying. I ain't gonna touch that one with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> that constellation makes no sense. And so, uh, you know, uh, the end of these credits has always been a little unsettling to me for whatever reason. It's just like the, the slowly fading away music, the silence to this endlessly scrolling animated background. You can't get out of it either, no matter what button you press. It, it's just stuck there until you reset the game. It's just kind of a little, I don't know, it creeped me out when I was younger, for whatever reason. But the uh, ending aside, very... Very, very end aside, it's a neat little ending to a neat little game, you know? Uh, so, uh, next time on Let's Play Kirby's Dream Course, ha <laughs> ha, you thought we were done? No, no, no. What if I told you we're only halfway? Next time on Let's Play Kirby's Dream Course, we begin Extra Mode. <laughs>